So you've found yourself a skeleton spawner, and now you want to know how to make a mob farm for it. Well, I'm going to show you how. As always, I'm some Aussie, and this is how to build a skeleton farm. Let's get to it. Adio. One clip. Let's see how we do it. As you can see, I've done a bit of pre-digging here for the skeleton spawner. I've marked it out, so we're going to go two blocks above the spawner and three blocks below it for a total of six blocks. So there's obviously the spawner level, which is this one. That's the level the spawner is going to be on. You want to go up two, down three. With that out of the way, you're also going to want to put a block above the spawner. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be a half slab, glass block, two full blocks even. Doesn't matter, whatever you want to use. Now that you've done that, I'll clarify the size of this room. So it's a nine block wide area, so four blocks each side of the spawner, as you can see. Like so, it's going to make a square. Once you've done that, you're going to come to the center and you're going to make a three by three hole, like so, like so. Chuck in some fence gates around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, open them all up. Fantastic. Now you want to come here and dig out a few more blocks like this, leaving yourself a little escape block. This is just the way that I would build it, which is the most convenient way to do it in survival. You should definitely light this room up in survival. Um, I might as well give you a little bit of a bonus. Wow. Bonus info, can't spell torch. Um, some bonus content. If you torch these skeleton spawners like this, or any spawner for that matter, in a fully dug out room, that will completely stop all spawning from this spawner. Happy days. So now you want to chuck in your water, one in each corner, like magic, and it'll do this in the center. This is exactly what you want. Drop back down in your little center hole, Dig out your helper block and dig another block down. Awesome. Now you want to pick a direction to go in for your killing room. I'm going to go this way. And you want to come across. And I mean, it doesn't really matter how far at this point. So now you're going to do your uh, little trickery for these mobs. So if you grab yourself some half slabs of any any kind, it doesn't really matter. And you break this block out, put a half slab. That block out, put a half slab. This one, half slab. This one. And this one, and so on and so forth, all the way up to the point of where you start going up again. Then, happy days. So you've got this now. You want to come through with some water. You want to place a water block there, and a water block here. Just like so. As you can see. Right. So it, it all funnels in, everything works well. So it's important to do this now while it's a 3x3. Three three, and then you punch out two blocks on one of these sides. That's just going to make the mobs line up better. And it's going to stop them from cramming this hole. If I were to do this first. I'll show you now. Like so. If you were to dig this hole out first, then put the water in. Hopefully not close a bunch of fence gates while you're at it. You'll notice that sometimes it does the right thing, other times it doesn't, and this water will go straight into these blocks. I have no idea why. In my testing, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, which is very strange, but there you have it. So I highly recommend just having this a 3x3 three three when you put this water in. Full beans? Full beans. So you've come out. This is the end of the end of the line for Mr. Skeleton. I would recommend coming down there and bringing it across again for however many blocks. Doesn't really matter. The length of the water stream is probably good enough. Or more than good enough. And then once you've come to the end of your stream, which is what? There. Also, these don't matter anymore. And if you want, you can put full blocks in, half blocks, whatever. Does not matter an inch. Yeah. You're going to need some fence gates. And you can chuck them in uh, here, here, and here. Open those guys all up. Come through. 
the other side of these fence gates. And this is going to be where your mob evader is. So this is where they're going to come upwards so that you can drop them down and do damage to them. So what you're going to do in survival is probably use the two block method so you don't kill yourself with gravel and go straight up. Wait, so we've made it to the surface. Um, depending on how low that mob farm is, you just want to go up roughly 30 blocks for this pit anyway. Once you've done that, you can either use the kelp trip, uh, kelp trick to get the water sources in here, or you can just place that bucket by bucket like so. I'm going to show you both methods, so obviously that was the bucket method. The kelp trick method is to come up to the top of your water column, place one source of water at the very top, it'll flow down, like you can, as you can see it's flowing down. Once it gets to the bottom, you just place kelp all the way up, like so. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And that will turn all of these into source blocks. Super handy trick. Um, it's fantastic for when you need to get mobs around in a pinch. Kelp. Cool. Radio. So next tip for this column is you want to punch out that block directly across from your water stream. The reason you do this is it makes a, a suction here. So my I'm sitting here and now my hand's off the keyboard and it pulls me in, as you can see. Right. Happy days. If you've got silk touch... And you can get some ice, chuck a piece of ice there. If you can't, it doesn't matter. The farm will still work just fine with a regular block. Now you want to come through. And this is the trickiest part of the whole farm. You're going to need to get yourself a piece of this. This soul sand. There's a couple of ways to get this soul sand. You can either find it on the bottom of the ocean in those little random generated ocean areas. Or you can go to the nether and grab yourself some soul sand. Once you've got a piece of that... Just chuck it in right there, and you've made the bottom half of the mob spawner. Fantastic. So now you want to work out where your kill chamber is. So in this case, I think I'm going to put my kill chamber right there, for example. So you want to come down. Oh, went too far. Um, yeah. Aha, magic. Fix this hole that I've just made for myself. Awesome. Um, so I've I've decided that this is going to be my kill chamber. This is where I'm going to kill the mobs, and I want the mobs to drop in to that height there, so I can hit their feet. So this height is 37. So what you can do is bring up your calculator or you know, do it in your head, whatever. And in my case, it's 37 plus 24, which is 61 blocks. Easy. Can't go wrong. So now I just want to come up to 61. Doo -doo. Which in my case so happens to be right here. Which is, that's my 24 blocks. So I want to remove any water sources above that. Like so. And then come down... Well, yeah, come down one block to be safe. You don't really need them to be one punch, realistically, because you're probably going to use a sword anyway, so this is just to be safer than sorry, so you don't have to come back here because you've accidentally dropped them one too far. It's better just to drop them one too short. Fantastic. So now you want to punch out some blocks, and before you open up the uh, slipway for these, chuck a fence gate there and open it. Now you just cover the top up with a block of your choosing, doesn't matter. And that is your mob farm done. So obviously we don't want them getting out. There we go. They can no longer get out. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that because mobs will spawn there. So if you grab yourself a slob, if you will, and chuck a slob there. With the new 1.14 mechanics, you can just shift in there anyway, so to work flawlessly now without further ado let's get this farm running so you can see how it goes 
Hopefully I don't punch out the spawner because that'd be embarrassing. There we go. And make sure the game is on hard move. So as you can see, they're bunching up, but because they're skeletons, they sink in the water. And then that system that we've got makes sure that they go they go in single file into the mob evader. They slide across. And they're going to bump each other because we don't have ice there. And come on through. If this was ice, in some cases, he would just slip all the way across straight into the water. I'm just going to nudge him in there. Place it with some ice. Either way, it doesn't matter because standing on this block here is more than eight blocks away from this spawner. So therefore, it won't interrupt its spawning capability anyway. Sweet. Happy days. The farm is working as intended. Now we come over here. As you can see, I've got some glass here so I can look in. If you're going to do this and put glass to look in, make sure you half slab this room and don't light up any more than zero light beyond these glass. So what I mean by that is if you wanted a little bit of light in here, like my Let's Play world, for example, you could very well burrow up a bunch of blocks like this, chuck a torch, and then so the light level here is two. That'd be one. Level two. Okay, well, a bit weird. Got one more block. So if you chuck a light in there like so, that would be fine. Let me grab some milk and I'll show you what it looks like. So it's just some nice ambient light, but it doesn't reach into this spawner even with the glass. So if you want to do that, that's fine. You can do that, but honestly, because it's a... Half slabbed area, you don't even need that. It'll just be fine here. Nothing will spawn. As you can see, they're piling up. They're all two shot. I think. Yeah, they're all two shot. They just come through, whack them all. That's your mob farm done. If you want to let these guys build up more than that, what you can do is break out these two blocks here and these two blocks there. So that'll stop your entity cramming as much. And then if you've got sharpness three and you really really feeling bold and you want to let these guys build up a lot you could come through here and dig out these blocks as well that'll give you the ability to store up about 150 mobs here before you have to kill them and then you just get your sword and start hacking keeping in mind you're not going to be able to get to those drops at the back but if you're, if you're just here for XP and you want to just AFK for a bit, then that's the easiest way to do it. But in my case, I have it like this. And that gives me 70 so mobs, which is enough for me. And then I just come back and swing away. Alternatively, you can also get yourself an auto clicker and just auto click here with a sword. And it'll kill them all day and give you a bunch of experience. But hopefully you found this little tutorial pretty helpful. I think it's a pretty reliable mob farm and it works well so i've been some aussie if you like what you saw leave a like if you want to see more consider subscribing i'll see you later bye